Welcome, YouTubers, to another episode in my Grammar Hero series. In today's video, there will be five practice test questions assessing your knowledge of calculating discounts, tax, discounts plus tax, tips, and double discounts. As it happens, these are all topics that frequently appear in the arithmetic reasoning subtest of the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery. And in light of that, you want to make sure that you can do all of these things. Similarly, I want to point out that on the actual ASVAB and PICAT, you're not going to be permitted to use a reference sheet or a calculator. So as you work your way through these practice test questions, try not to use any of those resources. And of course, in order to get the most out of this video, you'll want to pause the video after I read a question, attempt to work out the question on your own, and then resume playing the video to check your solution. In all honesty, if you can answer three or four out of these five questions correctly, uh, chances are you're good to go as far as these topics are concerned. But that said, uh, you should keep in mind that my channel has everything you need to study for and ultimately pass the ASVAB and PICAT. So for instance, if you go into my algebra review playlist, uh, you'll see that I have an entire video on calculating discounts, tax tips, double discounts, and finding the original price. As a matter of fact, I uploaded that video on February 1st. It's got 16,000 views, 600 likes and no dislikes. Finally, I want to say this. So it's recently been brought to my attention that an expensive ASVAB tutor may be going through my free videos and creating similar content in an effort to market an online boot camp. Uh, guys, if they're doing that, that's a big clue that you don't need to pay anything to study for and pass the ASVAB, because if they're copying my free content, chances are that I have all the content you need to study for this test. If you want to help my channel out, there are two free things that you can do. If you haven't done so already, you can, one, consider subscribing to my channel, and two, if you think my content's helpful, uh, you're more than welcome to share links to my channel as well as my videos with other people. All right, so you're going to notice that the questions in this video are out of order, and that's simply because I went through my old practice test, uh, found questions for each of these topics, and put all those questions in one video. And with all those things finally being said, let's go ahead and get started with this video. So number two says, during the holiday season, a pair of shoes that normally cost $90 were marked down by 25%. What was the sale price of the shoes? So to find the sale price of these shoes, we're going to take the original price of the shoes. And from that, we're going to subtract out the discount amount times the original price. Of course, we know what all these things are already. Uh, the original price of the shoes, according to the problem, is uh, $90, so that's going to be our OP, and we know uh, they were marked down 25%. So our discount amount in this case is going to be 25%, but more often than not, you're going to express percents in decimal form uh, for word problems. So the decimal equivalent of 25% is 0.25. Now that we've identified those two things, let's just go ahead and plug them in accordingly. Again, we know the original price was $90, so this becomes 90 minus the discount amount, which is 0.25 times the original price. Again, that is 90. And once we do this simple arithmetic right here, we'll know the sale price of these shoes. Of course, we're going to do 0.25 times 90 first, and that's going to be 90 times 0.25. And as was the case in the first problem, you can see that we're multiplying a whole number by a decimal again. You want to clear this decimal by shifting it to the right however many times you need to. In this case, we're going to clear it by shifting our decimal one, two times to the right. I'm going to take note of that. And this problem becomes 90 times 25, albeit with two decimals to shift back into the left at the end when we're done. Again, we cleared the decimal by moving it to the right here. Once we work this out, we'll put our decimal back in our answer by shifting it to the left two times. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Zero times five, of course, is zero. Nine times five is 45. 
before we start multiplication with this 2, we have to bring in a 0 placeholder. 2 times 0 is 0. 9 times 2 is 18. Let's add these together now. 0 plus 0 is 0. 5 plus 0 is 5. Uh, 8 plus 4 is going to be 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So drop down a 2, carry a 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. Bring in our two decimals. 1, 2. So this becomes 90 minus 2250. Of course, since we're doing subtraction involving uh, a whole number and a decimal here, it might be easier to work this off to the side like this. 90 minus 2250. Of course, you can go ahead and add your decimal in 90 as well as two zero placeholders, which should make this a little bit easier to do. Zero minus zero is zero. Zero minus five we can't do, so we have to borrow uh, from the left. We can't borrow from zero, so we're gonna have to borrow from this nine. This will become eight, and then this will become 10. We're gonna borrow one more time. This will become nine, and now this will become 10. 10 minus five is five. Drop down our decimal in place. Uh, 9 minus 2, of course, is 7, and 8 minus 2 is 6. So we can see that these shoes with a 25% discount should cost $67.50, which is answer choice B. All right, so we can see number 3 says you're purchasing a new TV for $990. If sales tax is 9%, what is the total cost for the TV, including sales tax, so let's think about what we're doing uh, for this problem algebraically. Uh, we want to find our final price. And how are we going to find our final price? We're going to take the original price of the TV, and then we're going to add to that the amount of tax we're going to pay on that TV. And how do you find that? You take your tax rate and you multiply it by your original price. All right. so. Uh, we have all these things, so let's fill them in accordingly. We know the original cost for the TV is $990. We know our tax rate is 9%. All right, so on the ASVAB, you're always going to express percents in decimal form. So 9% in decimal form is 0.09. And again, our original price for the TV was $990. All right, so uh, I want to work this off to the side. Notably, I want to do uh, $990 times 0.09. But that said, you can see we're working with uh, multiplication involving a whole number and a decimal. In order to make this a little bit easier to do, I want to shift this decimal and 0.09 uh, two times to the right, such that uh, 0.09 simply becomes 9. And this problem now becomes 990 times 9. But that said, I'm going to take note of how many times I moved this decimal. I moved it twice. And the reason I'm doing that is because once I work out this problem, I'm going to take those decimals I moved to the right here, and I'm going to shift them back into the left. So let's work this out now. 9 times 0 is 0. 9 times 9 is 81. So we're going to drop down a 1 and carry an 8. 9 times 9 is 81. 81 plus 8 is 89. Take our two decimals that we moved here and shift them back into the left. So that's one, two times. So we can see that our uh, sales tax in this case is going to be 89.10. All right. So now all we have to do is add these two amounts together. And uh, in case that's not easy to do like this, uh, you're more than welcome to write it off to the side like this. We have 990 plus 89.10. And in case you haven't done this in a while, you might be saying to yourself, well, what am I going to do with this decimal? There's no decimal in 990. Well, you can just add a decimal and a couple zero placeholders. And now you can do this math. Zero plus zero is zero. Zero plus one is one. Drop down your decimal. Nine plus zero is nine. Eight plus nine is going to be... Uh, 17, so we're going to carry a 1 and drop down a 7. 9 plus 1 is 10. So our final price, including uh, tax as well as the original cost of the TV, is $1,079.10.
which we can see is answer choice D in this case. All right, this uh, first question says, Rosa and her friends are eating out for dinner. If their bill was forty-five eighty, and they leave a 20% tip, how much will dinner cost them in total? So um, let's try to represent what's going on here algebraically. Uh, we want to find what Rosa and her friend's uh, total bill is going to be. So that kind of looks like this. Total equals, we have their bill, of course. And we want to leave a 20% tip of the bill. So that's going to look like this, 0 0.20 times their bill. So algebraically, this is what's going on. And in case you're wondering where I got this 0 0.20, again, the decimal equivalent of 20% is 0.2 or 0 0.20. So to solve this one, all we do is have to uh, figure out what this is. Again, uh, it's going to look like this. We know what her bill is. It's 45.80. We know we're taking 20% of that for the tip. And I'm going to drop the zero here. So it's going to be 0 0.2 times 45.80. All right, so uh, the very first thing I want to do is figure out what 0.2 times 45.80 is. And I'm going to do that off to the side so I don't make any uh, simple mistakes here. So it's going to be 45.80 times 0.2. And as you can see, we're multiplying uh, two decimals together, notably 45.80 times 0.2. Uh, in order to make this math a little bit easier, I want to get rid of these decimals completely. So I'm going to take this decimal in uh, 4580 and shift it two times to the right. And likewise, I'm going to take this decimal in 0.2 and shift it one time to the right as well. So in total, I moved the decimal places in both numbers three times. So in reality, I'm working this out, 45. 80 with no decimal times 2 with no decimal. And once I work this out, I'm going to take those three decimal places that I shifted to the right here, and I'm going to shift them back into the left. So let's go ahead and do that. 2 times 0, of course, is 0. 2 times 8 is 16, so we're going to drop down a 6 and carry a 1. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 1 is 11. Uh, carry a 1. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1 is 9. Bring our three decimal places back in. One, two, three. So we can see that this is 91 or 9.16. And again, we can drop off this zero since it doesn't affect the value of this. So let's just go ahead and update our little algebraic expression over here accordingly. This becomes 4580 plus 916. And again, uh, now that we're adding two decimals together, I'm going to work that off to the side so I don't make any simple mistakes. So we have 45, 80 plus 9, 16. Uh, since we're adding decimals, we don't have to make any adjustments as far as moving the decimal left and right goes. That said, the very first thing you can do is you can drop down that decimal in place. And now we're just doing simple addition. So 0 plus 6 is 6. Uh, 8 plus 1 is 9, Four, 5 plus 9 is 14, carry a 1, 1 plus 4 is 5. So in total, including the 20% tip, we can see they spent 54.96, which is answer choice uh, D in this case. All right, so uh, this first question says, a snowmobile, which is originally priced at $2,800, is on sale for 20% off. If the sales tax rate is 8.25%, what is its final sales price, including tax? So uh, for this one, uh, we have to do quite a few steps to figure out what the final sale price is going to be, including tax. The very first thing you have to do is calculate the sale price with no tax on it whatsoever. Okay, so that's what we're going to do first. After we uh, calculate that amount, and I'm just going to call that SP for short, we're going to have to figure out what the sales price is plus tax. Okay, 
So again, when you calculate the sales price, you're not concerned about tax. Uh, but when you want to know the final sales price, uh, you're going to include the tax amount. So let's go ahead and get started doing this. Again, uh, you can find the sale price by uh, following this. Again, sales price is always going to be the original price minus the discount amount times the original price. Okay, so in this case, we're trying to figure out what the sales price is. Uh, we know what the original price is. It's $2,800, so that's going to be $2,800. Uh, according to the problem, the discount amount is 20%. And uh, on the ASVAB, you're always going to write uh, percents as decimals. So that's the same as 0.2. So again, the discount amount is 20%, and we're going to multiply that by the original price. Okay, so let's work this off to the side so as not to make any mistakes. Uh, the very first thing I'm going to work off to the side is this 2800 times 0.2. And as you can see, I'm multiplying a whole number, notably 2800, by a decimal, notably 0.2. In order to make this math a little bit easier, I'm going to get rid of this decimal by shifting it one time to the right to make that just 2. So this becomes 2,800 times two, albeit with one decimal to shift back into the left at the end when we're done. So we get zero times two, which is zero, zero times two, which is zero, eight times two, which is 16. So we're gonna drop down a six and carry a one, two times two, which is four plus one is five, bring that one decimal back over. So we can see that the sales price is going to be 2800 which is the original price of the snowmobile, minus $560, which is the discount. Okay, And again, uh, in an effort not to make any mistakes, I'm going to do 2800 minus 560 off to the side. Uh, so we have 0 minus 0, which is 0. 0 minus 6 we can't do, so we're going to have to borrow. This is going to become 7. This is going to become 10. 10 minus 6 is 4, 7 minus 5 is 2, and we're just going to drop down this 2 since we're not subtracting it by anything. So the sales price excluding tax is 2240. Okay. So we finished uh, step one, we found the sales price. Now we have to add tax to this sales price. And let's think about how we could do that algebraically. And let's do that over here. So to find the final sales price, which I'm going to call FSP, we're going to take the sales price and then we're going to add the tax amount times the sales price. Okay. And we have all this information. Again, this final sales price is going to be the sales price, which is this 2240 over here plus the tax amount. And let's go back to our problem to see what that was. Tax amount was 8.25%. Uh, Again, we're always going to use that in decimal form. So that's going to be 0 0.0825. So this is going to be 0 0.0825 times the sales price. So that's going to be uh, 2240. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and work this out. And uh, we'll be done with this one. So... Again, over here, we're doing uh, 2240 times 0 0.0825. That is to say, let me make sure I got the right tax rate. Yep. That is to say we're multiplying a whole number by a decimal again. And to make this a little bit easier, I want to take this decimal and 0 0.0825 and shift it one, two, three, four times to the right to get rid of that decimal completely. So this is going to become 2240 times 825, albeit with four decimals to move back into the left when we're done. Again, we moved them to the right here, and we'll move them back into the left when we're done. So let's do this math very quickly. Uh, we have 0 times 5, which is 0. 4 times 5, which is uh, 20. So we're going to drop down a 0 and carry a 2. 5 times 2 is 2. 10 plus 2 is 12, so we're going to drop down a 2 and carry a 1. 5 times 2 is 10 plus 1 is 11. 
Before we start multiplication with this 2, we have to add a 0 placeholder. Now this becomes uh, 0 times 2, which is 0. 4 times 2, which is 8. Uh, 2 times 2, which is 4. And 2 times 2, which is 4. Okay, before we start multiplication with this 8, we have to bring in two 0 placeholders. And this becomes 8 times 0, which is 0. 8 times 4, which is 32. So we're going to drop down a 2 and carry a 3. Uh, 2 times 8 is 16, 17, 18, 19. So we're going to carry a 1. Uh, 8 times 2 is 16, plus 1 is 17. Let's add this all up. We have 0 plus 0 plus 0, which is 0. 0 plus 0 plus 0, which is 0. 8 plus 2 is 10. So we're going to drop down a 0 and carry a 1. Uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, 9 plus 5 is going to be 14. Carry a 1. Uh, 7 plus 1 is 8. Uh, and 1 plus nothing is 1. Let's bring our four decimal places back in. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so we can see our tax amount. And we'll, we'll write it up over here. It's going to be 2240 plus uh, 18480. Uh, and we can just put 0.8. So now we just have to add these two together. And let's do that right here. We have 2240 plus 18480. And we'll add a decimal here and a zero there as needed. Uh, zero plus eight is eight. Drop down your decimal in place. 4 plus 0 is 4. 8 plus 4 is 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Drop down a 2, carry a 1. 2 plus 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4. And 2 plus nothing is uh, 2. So our final sales price, including taxes, 24, 24, 80. Which is uh, answer choice... Uh, D in this case. Again, uh, there's a lot of work in this problem, but none of it's too hard. And I recently created a video in which I showed you how to calculate uh, a discount amount as well as uh, tax. Uh, in this case, you had to do both of those things, which makes it a little more challenging than any problem in that video. So um, if you need to rewatch this video or go watch that other video, I'd recommend you do so. But this is a fairly simple problem uh, that shows up somewhat frequently. So make sure you know how to do this one. All right. So uh, question one says a bicycle shop is selling a bicycle for $500. During the holidays, the shop offers successive discounts on the bicycle of 10% and 20%. During this sale, what would a customer actually pay for the bicycle? So um, let's illustrate what's going on in this problem algebraically. Uh, Obviously, we're finding uh, discounts on a bicycle. But that said, we have to go about doing it a certain way. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find what this first sales price is with the 10% discount. So that's going to be sales price equals the original price of the bicycle minus the original price of the bicycle times uh, this first discount amount. Okay? And once I do that, I have to apply this second discount amount to the new sales price. So the final sales price is going to be the sales price that we calculated here minus the sales price times the second discount amount. Okay. Whatever you do, don't combine these two to be 30% and take 30% off $500. That will give you the wrong answer. You have to work them out separately like this. So that said, let's go ahead and get started. We know our original price is right here. It's $500. So we'll fill that in accordingly. Minus 500. The first discount amount is right here. It's 10%. And we're always going to express that in decimal form as 0.1. All right, let's keep working this out. Um, this is actually pretty easy to do. Uh, but that said, I'll do it off to the side right here. We have 500 times 0.1. That is to say we're multiplying a whole number by a decimal. 
Uh, if you've watched any of my videos uh, yet, you'll, you'll know that I'm going to get rid of this decimal by shifting it to the right one time to make this 500 times 1. And I'm going to shift that decimal one time back to the left when I'm done here. So 1 times 0 is 0, 1 times 0 is 0, 1 times 5 is 5. Shift that one decimal back into the left. So we can see 10% of 500 is 50. So this becomes 500 minus 50. 500 minus 50, I'm not going to work off to the side. That should be 450. So our first sales price, after we applied a discount of 10% to the original price of the bicycle, uh, resulted in $450. Now to find the final sales price, we're going to take our sales price, which is right here, 450. We're going to uh, multiply that by the second discount amount, notably 20%, our 0.2 in decimal form, and this will give our give us our final sales price, which is what the customer will actually pay for the bicycle. So again, let's go ahead and work this off to the side. We have 450 times 0.2. That is to say we're multiplying a whole number by a decimal. Again, we want to clear that decimal by shifting it one time to the right to make this 450 times 2 with no decimals, and albeit with uh, one decimal to shift back into the left. So 0 times 2 is 0. 5 times 2 is 10, so we're going to drop down to 0 and carry a 1. 4 times 2 is 8 plus 1 is 9, and we're going to shift our one decimal back into the left. So this becomes 450 minus 90. And in case you can't do that in your head, we'll go ahead and work that off to the side so as not to make any mistakes here. We have 450 minus 90. 0 minus 0 is 0. 5 minus 9 we can't do, so we're going to have to borrow. This is going to become 3. This is going to become 15. 15 minus 9 is 6. 3 minus nothing is 3. So we can see our final sales price uh, that is the sales price when the first discount was applied as well as the second discount was applied is $360. So ultimately, the customer will pay $360 for a $500 bicycle minus these two discounts. All right, so that's that one. Uh, you should know how to calculate successive discounts. All right, so that is it for this video. As always, I hope you found it helpful. And as usual, you're more than welcome to leave feedback in the comment section below. As I stressed at the beginning of this video, it appears as if an expensive tutor is going through my free content, remaking it, and using that content to market an online boot camp. Ask yourself this, if they're copying my older content to market their premium content, do you really need to buy their premium content? Probably not. Again, if you want to help my channel out, please consider subscribing to it. And on that note, I'm going to go ahead and catch you loose. Konnichiwa.